In this video, I am going to explain theory of high performance liquid chromatography. If you are new on my channel, please subscribe. Now let's start today's video. First we will see introduction of HPLC. Now in previous video, I explained about GC. GC is a good separation technique, but only 20% of known compounds are analyzed by GC because remaining compounds are either insufficiently volatile or thermally unstable and due to these reasons most of the compounds are separated and analyzed by HPLC. HPLC is an excellent separation technique. It can separate macromolecules, ionic species, thermolabile compounds, polymeric material, high molecular weight and polyfunctional molecules. Sometimes about HPLC it is said that anything could be dissolved HPLC is able to resolve. If we can dissolve any sample in some solvent HPLC can separate and analyze that sample. So in this way the separation capabilities of HPLC are explained. HPLC is a very efficient separation technique and it requires very short time for separation of components. It is also called as high pressure liquid chromatography because the stationary phase is very finely divided and packed in the column. Stationary phase is finely powdered and densely packed in the column. The particle size of stationary phase is generally in the range of 3 to 10 micrometer. This 3 to 10 micrometer is very small particle size and such stationary phase is densely packed in the column. Due to this dense packing or compact packing, mobile phase will require very high pressure to flow through the column. The pressure required in HPLC is up to 3000 pounds per square inch or even higher pressure is required. That's why it is also called as high pressure liquid chromatography. 3 to 10 micrometer particles are densely packed in the column and mobile phase or eluent will require very high pressure to flow through the column. Now we'll see theory of HPLC. Separation depends on nature of sample, nature of stationary phase used and nature of mobile phase used. In HPLC retention time, number of theoretical plates and HETP that is height equivalent to theoretical plate are very important parameters. Number of theoretical plates and HETP I am going to explain in the next video. Now we will see about retention time. Retention time is the time taken by the sample component to travel from the point of injection to the end of column. Retention time is the unique identification characteristic of sample. In the identical chromatographic conditions, if two substances show same retention time, it is said that they are same In HPLC separation, the compound that have higher affinity for mobile phase will move more quickly than those that have stronger affinity for stationary phase. It means that if the sample component has more affinity for mobile phase or it is more soluble in mobile phase, it will travel down the column quickly and come out from the column quickly. It will have short retention time. While if the sample component has stronger affinity for stationary phase, it will be retained on the column for more time it will travel slowly from the column and come out later from the column and it will have more retention time. There are various mechanisms by which sample components get separated in HPLC. Now modes of separation in HPLC. First is normal phase chromatography that is normal phase HPLC. Reverse phase chromatography. Adsorption chromatography. Liquid-liquid partition chromatography, ion exchange chromatography, ion pair chromatography, size exclusion chromatography, affinity chromatography. So these are various modes of separation in HPLC. 
द टू इल्यूशन दैट इज आइसोक्रेटिक इल्यूशन एंड ग्रेडियंट इल्यूशन आई हैव एक्सप्लेन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो नाउ वील सी दीज मोड्स ऑफ सेपरेशन वन बाय वन फर्स्ट वन इज नॉर्मल फेज एच पी एल सी दैट इज एन पी एच पी एल सी इन नॉर्मल फेज एच पी एल सी सेपरेशन ऑफ सैम्पल मिक्सर इज बेस्ड ऑन पोलैरिटी दैट इज इंटरक्शन ऑफ सोल्यूट विथ स्टेशनरी फेज here in normal phase hplc stationary phase used is polar in nature for example silica alumina bonded polyvinyl alcohols etc and the mobile phase used is non polar in nature for example hexane heptane etc now polar means hydrophilic or water loving substance and non polar means hydrophobic or water hating substance in normal phase hplc the non polar solutes will elute fast whereas the polar solutes will elute slowly now non polar solutes will have more affinity for non polar mobile phase and that's why they will travel fast from the column and they have short retention time whereas the polar solutes will have more affinity for polar stationary phases and they will retain on the column for more time and travel slowly and they will have more retention normal phase hplc is generally used for separation of oil soluble vitamins essential oils nitrophenols etc all these are non polar in nature and that's why nphplc is used for its separation nphplc is not much useful for pharmaceutical analysis because most of the drugs are polar in nature if we want to separate polar substance by normal phase hplc the retention time for those polar substance will be very high and the peaks will be broad that's why generally for polar substance normal phase hplc is not preferred now we'll see next that is reverse phase hplc the stationary phase used in reverse phase hplc is non polar in nature for example hydrophobic bonded octadecyl that is c18 octyl c8 etc mobile phases used are relatively polar in nature for example methanol acetonitrile etc exactly opposite to that of normal phase and that's why the name reverse phase hplc the polar solutes will elute fast from the column whereas non polar solutes will elute slow from the column polar solutes will have short retention time whereas non polar solutes will have more retention time. in reverse phase hplc separation occurs due to effect of mobile phase solvent in forcing the solute into hydrocarbonous bonded layers of stationary phase this technique is much popular in pharmaceutical analysis because most of the drugs are polar in nature and these polar drugs will get eluted fast from the column they will have short retention time that's why the time required for analysis will be short now next is adsorption chromatography in this technique the stationary phase is solid in nature and there is interaction of solute with the stationary phase and this interaction is competitive in nature this is one of the most oldest form of chromatography next is liquid liquid partition chromatography the liquid stationary phase is coated on the porous support material and this liquid stationary phase is insoluble in mobile phase or they are immiscible with each other sample molecules are partitioned between liquid stationary phase and mobile phase if the sample is more soluble in stationary phase it will stay more time in the stationary phase and it will be eluted later it will take long time for elution now adsorption chromatography and liquid liquid partition chromatography i have explained in detail in the next is ion exchange chromatography in ion exchange chromatography cation or anion exchanger resins are used as stationary phase these resins contain ionic groups like 
cationic group or anionic group which will interact with the ionic groups of sample molecule and the separation will occur here simple uh, organic liquids like methanol ethanol they are not used as mobile phase instead of that electrolyte solutions are used as mobile phase Ion exchange chromatography is used for separation of ionic species. It is also used for separation of protein or any solute, any sample which is ionized that can be separated by ion exchange chromatography. Next is ion pair chromatography. In ion pair chromatography, ion pairing agent is added to the mobile phase at low concentration. The molecules of ionic sample are masked by counter ions of ion pairing agent. Here, quaternary ammonium compounds are generally used as ion pairing agent. Now, ion exchange chromatography and ion pair chromatography are two different techniques of chromatography. These techniques I am going to discuss in detail in the next upcoming videos. Next is size exclusion chromatography. It is also known as gel permeation chromatography or gel filtration chromatography. The particle of column packing is having various pore size and pore network so that it can separate particles of sample on the basis of molecular size and shape. Uh, in size exclusion chromatography, the gels are used as stationary phase. These gels will have molecular sieve and through this molecular sieve, uh, the sample will get separated according to their molecular size and shape. The largest molecules will elute first while the smallest molecule will elute last. This is about the size exclusion. Now we will see affinity chromatography. It is also known as bioaffinity chromatography. In this technique, there is interaction between solute molecules and stationary phase. Now due to this interaction, there is formation of stable, specific and reversible complexes. Now formation of these complexes are based upon common molecular forces such as van der Waals interaction, electrostatic interaction, dipole-dipole interaction or hydrophobic interaction or hydrogen bond formation. Now due to all these interactions or due to one of these interaction there is uh, formation of stable and reversible complexes between the solute molecule and stationary phase. In short, uh, if the solute is having affinity for stationary phase, affinity chromatography is performed. This technique is mostly used for separation of biological macromolecules such as nucleic acids, antibodies, enzymes, etc. Now, this is about the theory of HPLC and different modes of separation in HPLC. I hope you understood all these points. If you like my video, please share it and subscribe my channel. And thank you for watching my video. Thank you very much.